This video shows a demonstration domain that has been inspired from a technical manual published by the US Department of the Army and that describes failure modes and effects. This domain contains various items, a object model describing a cooling installation, a simulation engine to compute flows and temperature inside these different equipments. A third item here that shows example of a PID automation. Then a set of rules to describe how symptoms can be created. And finally an example of a bow tie rule. So let's first drill into the cooling installation model and as you can see this model consists of several units we have here at the bottom a power supply unit that's not being used in this demonstration we then have a air handling system that is there to um, cool down the uh, air coming from these fans and that will flow into the room we have a chilled water system that is there to cool down the water of these heat exchangers and then finally we have a, a last unit here the industrial cooling water supply unit that is there to cool down the water from the chilled water system each of these units can be clicked so I can click on the air handling system and go inside this unit and see that it consists of in this case two fans um, as I said blowing air into these heat exchangers so you can see the input temperature 27.78 degrees uh, being cooled down to almost 20 degrees here and going inside this room where the actual temperature is exactly 20 degrees and this water is coming from the chilled water system where it comes out from there at almost 8 degrees and goes back into that uh, chilled water system at almost in this case 17 degrees so if we click on this link here we'll go inside the chilled water system and there we can see what we have two um, twin lines here uh, each consisting basically of a pump uh, pushing the flow the water flow inside a chiller here uh, that will reduce the temperature of that water from 16.62 to almost 8 degrees and these uh, chiller have uh, inside of them have condensers and these condensers are part of the industrial cooling water supply unit so I can navigate to that unit also by clicking on this link and here we see the uh, industrial cooling water supply unit that is also a uh, kind of twin installation where we have a we have two reservoirs the east one and the west one each of them is actually feeding uh, two pumps that are pushing water into uh, cooling towers that are uh, reducing the temperature of this th this water and it's then pushed inside the condensers of uh, uh, both chillers so that is a uh, that was a short description of the um, um, object model you can see that in these object model uh, in these units uh, we have uh, measurement units here so we have little uh, objects here that are measuring either the temperature or the flow of the various um, objects and equipments and connections that we have in this object model let's now have a look at the um, simulation engine that is uh, implemented in this domain as a control flow uh, rule uh, that is uh, executed as a kind of infinite loop here so every second it will actually when it's in this mode simulation mode it will actually execute this branch here that consists of this simulation block here and this block uh, executes a number of scripts that are there to simulate the behavior of each component uh, the behavior of each connection then update the little measurement uh, objects that we have seen inside the uh, object model and then decide whether or not we are using automation logic to control various things so that's a very short description of the simulation engine now let's have a look at the um, PID the third entry of this demonstration that shows how the temperature 
can be controlled inside the room either manually or with a PID control. Let's first look at the PID control and um, to show you that I have here two graphs, one showing the uh, temperature inside the room. It's quite stable for the last few minutes. It's been set to uh, 20 degrees so the PID is doing its job and uh, uh, make sure that the temperature inside the room is indeed 20 degrees. To, to get these 20 degrees there uh, the PID is actually uh, asking both pumps P5 and P6 to run at the same uh, same flow and almost 50 here. If we change that if we start playing with the set point here we'll see the effect on that um, so for instance if I ask a, a different temperature I've asked the system to reduce the temperature inside the room the PID should react and slowly ask the flow uh, slowly ask the pump to push a little bit more flow so that the temperature here can decrease from 20 to 90 degrees so we'll see here uh, slowly the temperature of the room uh, leaving now the 20 degrees and going uh, to 19 degrees hopefully it will it should normally st stabilize around that values in a few in a few minutes this um, is done by a PID uh, control uh, we can make the life of this PID controller or I, I can first show you the uh, PID controller here the PID controller is a little object like this that takes its value its set point and its uh, temperature value from a, an object like this through connections uh, that are strip line here and it, it implements a, a PID logic obviously and the result of these uh, calculations are actually sent inside the flow of both P5 and P6 and we see now that the temperature is slowly going to uh, adjust itself around the 19 uh, degrees so if I go back to the screen here see that the PID has decided that the flow of the pump now should be around uh, 60 or something like that. We can make the life of the PID a bit more complex uh, by opening and closing the door here. Uh, the room is not completely isolated so if I unlock the door of the room there will be more hot air coming inside the room um, and in that case of course when the isolation of the room is not 100% well, the PID will have to regulate that part of the of the temperature also. So that is to show you the how the automated uh, version of the uh, simulation can be done. We can also try to do this manually. And uh, to do this manually, I have this page here where I can just disarm the uh, control of the uh, of the flows uh, by by the PID and manually. Uh, control so now I have set these these pumps are running at 100 instead of running around uh, 50 or 60 so they will obviously cool down uh, the, the, the te temperature of the room so we don't want that so we probably want to reduce uh, the flow of these pumps uh, to something around 50 again and see if that affects the temperature if we can get back the temperature around the 19 degrees because that is the value that we wanted here so we can we can play with this here it, it will be of course a, a permanent a permanent change because we have here a door that can open and close and so on so uh, it, 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 it can be quite tricky to adjust manually the temperature but that's just the purpose of this exercise here so let's maybe put this back in automatic mode so the PID can control the flow and regulate the temperature so that we have um, in a minute or two again 19 degrees into this room. The fourth part of uh, this uh, demonstration is showing uh, how rules uh, can be implemented to detect abnormal symptoms and this is done by uh, on this page here where again we are playing with the, uh, uh, the P6 uh, uh, pump and what I'll do here, I'll also take control manually of the flow of that pump. Uh, it's actually now around 50. But if I, for any reason, decrease that flow below a certain threshold that is now 20, set to 20, then a rule will react 
to that go below and generate an event to indicate that the flow of P6 is uh, below its uh, threshold and a, a little icon appears here if I control again this value and set it back to a value higher than 20 the event is cleared and disappears from my uh, event browser here the same would be valid for these um, control towers but I will not demonstrate that right now here the last part is the last part of this demonstration is about the bow tie rule I'm going to that right now and I'll click here to show you the implementation of the rule to start with um, it's completely inspired from the um, uh, failure modes and effects analysis form has been described in the uh, US Army document um, so for instance all these potential failure modes or effects here have been uh, reproduced into this rule here so this rule the central point of this rule is an event uh, an incident in this case the fact that the uh, uh, industrial cool water is outside a specification uh, for a condenser it's a generic rule if that is the case then the rule will be triggered and look at the possible causes for this um, uh, outside spec event and that is listed by all these blocks here so each block here is actually a script that will be evaluated to determine whether this cause is effectively the right cause for this event and on the right hand side we have a list of possible consequences and each of them as a barrier that is also some code that can be evaluated by this rule here to determine whether this consequence is a possible uh, consequence or what is the level or the criticality of this consequence so if I show you an example of that rule now it has been executed here twice because we have two condensers inside the um, inside the object model and uh, as you can see here under that event I have a list of subsumed events a set of subsumed events for the causes a set of subsumed events for the consequences and I can click on each possible cause and see whether the test was uh, evaluated positively or negatively in this case the real cause of this event is the fact that the temperature was below the specification this test is positive and once the rule has executed all the causes it will try to determine which are the possible consequences and assign to each of them a different color a different priority so for instance in this case this one here has the highest priority and the highest uh, likelihood and uh, this um, closes the uh, demonstration. Thank you for watching.